Good morning and welcome to our recording of Easter Sunday's service for the 4th of April. On behalf of the Kirk Sessions of Elmville Presbyterian Church and Knox Presbyterian Church Floss, I would welcome you to the service. And I have two announcements before we begin. This is the final Sunday for this year's Lenten mission for EPC. It's in support of the Youth Haven in Barry. This is the last Sunday to contribute to that mission effort. Youth Haven offers people from 16 to 24 years old a safe place to sleep and to be. It also offers love, counseling support, employment assistance, practical life skills training, but most important is the sure knowledge that each and everyone who goes there, they will be safe. The annual congregational meeting of EPC will be held at 1 p.m. on Sunday, the 18th of April. The meeting will be held on the Zoom platform. The annual congregational meeting reports with a letter on how the meeting will be conducted are being distributed by the elders at this moment. From talking to you in the last few days, I know some of you already have. Any questions or concerns to me or Marlene Lambie, please, as soon as you like. Thank you.
Christ their Sunday liturgy. It says, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. He was dead and now he lives. Hallelujah. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. The tomb is empty. He was dead and now he lives. The journey begins again. Come, let us follow him. And let us start the new journey with prayer. God, God of life, you come came to us and you redeem all things. And now we give ourselves to you and continue your work of good news and reconciliation in the, in the world. Give us the strength to follow you on the mission you have called us to. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Let's pray together. Let's pray. Eternal God, we don't understand how you raised Jesus from the dead, how you breathed life into his broken body, how he rolled the stone away, how he somehow appeared unrecognized to Mary in the garden and to the two disciples on the Emmaus road, how he walked through solid stone walls and locked doors to be with the disciples, how he repeatedly appeared from nowhere to stand among his followers. What we do understand is this, that he changed the lives of all who met him, turning their sorrow into celebration, their despair into hope, their doubt into faith, and that he is with us now through his life-giving spirit refreshing and reinvigorating our lives, giving us joy, peace, and a sense of purpose that is, at times, unimaginable. We do not understand, but we believe. We offer worship in the name of that same Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Let us confess our sins to God. It's hard for us to be apart from one another at this very special time. As we worship and confess our erring ways before you and the whole company of heaven. Like Peter, we have denied you in our innermost hearts. We also have denied you with our lips, yet we have stopped. You have stopped our tears and heal their thoughts. Hear us now as we confess in the silence how and where and when we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. Lord Jesus, be with each of us in your risen power and be known to us in your mercy and your grace. Amen. And our assurance of forgiveness. God, with the mighty resurrection of your Son, our blessed Lord, he have wiped out the past, forgiven our sin, given us time to change our lives and led us to everlasting life.
from Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God is king over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people gather as the people of God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. The next reading is 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 11. Now, I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I have first received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, and then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Our last reading is from Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. John's Easter story begins with an arrival at the tomb on Easter morning, and the tomb's empty. Then they go back home. Go back where? I want to ask loudly. Then there's the two disciples on their way to Mass. Listen to them. Their reaction sounds like this. Some women told us Jesus had been raised from the dead. But, and listen to this but please, and look, we had planned to have supper in a mass. And well, well, we couldn't change our dinner reservation. Easter. A man raised from the dead and you won't change a dinner reservation. It makes me want to scratch my head. But, on the other hand, we know the end of the Easter story, don't we? Just as importantly, we know the disciples were people just like you and me. And people like us very much believe that you can have resurrection and still see and have the world as it was only yesterday. We are rooted there. We need Easter and its celebration, yet still demand that our world be unshaken undisturbed by resurrection. We need our same world. Matthew tells us that first Easter, the earth shook. Luke does Easter as a Sunday evening meal with the risen Jesus, of course. John has the newly resurrected Jesus and Mary Magdalene meet in the garden. This year, I need Matthew's Easter. Matthew's Easter is an earthquake. Doors come off of tombs, dead people walk in the streets, the stone rolls away. An angel is there. Ever been in an earthquake? My hotel at Los Angeles airport was shaking. I came out of a long, dark sleep. I thought the bed vibrator machine had switched itself on. It hadn't. Then, later, the man at the checkout desk said, at least the light fixtures didn't fall off the damn ceiling this time. I almost ran to the plane that was taking me home. I was shaken. The local people were nonchalant. And even more laid back than usual, I thought. Matthew said Easter is an earthquake that shook the whole wide world. Have you ever tried to explain the resurrection? For instance, was Jesus drugged? Did he go into a coma then wake up? Did the disciples marooned in deep grief and remorse simply fantasize the whole thing? On the other hand, if we can't explain what resurrection is, can resurrection explain us? Hmm. Do you think those first disciples actually wanted or even needed Easter? Aren't death and defeat much more explainable? We could ask, well, was he really the Messiah? Death always has the last word, doesn't it? Isn't it lunchtime now anyway? Yes, it is. Come on, let's go do some partners. All that lives dies, doesn't it? Even the good go in the end. 
We need to face those hard facts. The world, this world, is our world. Things are always tied down just like our minds. What dies stays dead. No surprises ever. Not even a please. That's us. But, but, Easter is about God. Alleluia! Alleluia! Easter is about God. God is not an ineffective friend. God is a very, very capable good friend. God is not about some inner feeling or experience. God really is a God who can create a way where there's no way. God really does make war on evil. Evil will be defeated. God really does raise Jesus. God's in charge. Alleluia. Alleluia. Here, right here, or there where you are. A Sunday school teacher I work with taught that God did at Christmas in a virgin's womb. God did at Easter when he invaded the tomb. He created a new way. God took charge. Alleluia. Alleluia. Was it the same angel who was sent to tell Joseph, name the baby Emmanuel, God with us, that told the woman that morning, don't be afraid, he isn't here. He's been raised. Jesus the babe grew up, got crucified, made the earth shake. God really did raise Jesus. God is in charge right here and there where you are. Alleluia! Alleluia! Each new day teaches us God's world is not about anything but life. God's world is not about death. Has the earth shaken for you recently? And then there's us, like Peter and Mary Magdalene. What's powerful enough to shake us free from our self-absorbed despair? Is it there is in Christ? That's what Easter Sunday is for the whole worldwide church. That stubborn, self-centered, foolish community that's called the worldwide church of Christ. Our earthquake today only happens when we experience in the living Christ in our midst. We too are completely unmoved by angelic messengers. Tell me, would you know if an angel were there, if you saw one? What blinds us as we go about our daily living? Remember how Jesus called Mary by name? His good shepherd voice, unforgettable to her. And she snapped out of her gloom and her grief. She came awake to the miracle of Easter morning. Alleluia! Alleluia! Has the earth shaken for you in this last traumatic year? How many simple telltale signs that Jesus is a living presence in your daily existence. Have you missed or 
tripped over. How many abandoned shrouds? How you thought, ah, that's just some dirty laundry. How many angels spoke truth to you? Truth you closed your ears to hear. Simply because it wasn't what you wanted to hear. Or never ever expected to see. How many times have you never seen Jesus as he walked by in his gardening clothes? How many times have you managed to ignore his voice? Perhaps, just perhaps it's our perpetual inability to catch a glimpse of the clues and cues to Jesus' presence with us is what helps Easter Sunday to be a surprise. Sisters and brothers, he really is alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. He really isn't in the tomb. He really appears to his disciples then and today. Listen. Listen. He calls us by name. Will you hear? And what will you see? Grave clothes? Or angel robes? Or do we need the shock of an earthquake? He's risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Gracious God, on this Easter Sunday, we give thanks for the death and resurrection of your Son, with the knowledge that his death was for the forgiveness of all our sins and eternal life in heaven. We also give thanks for all the people in the church who continue to keep our worship of you ongoing during these uncertain times. We give thanks for all the doctors and nurses who care for the sick and dying with the knowledge that they are at risk of their own lives and for the scientists who are working diligently for a cure for diseases, especially for the vaccine that will be used to keep us safe. We give thanks for PWSD, Presbyterian Sharing, the World Health Organization, and all the organizations who work diligently to aid in caring for people around the world in sickness and poverty, to teach them how to be self-sufficient, and sending doctors and nurses from other countries to help them heal. Bring them rest and renewal. Enter the hearts of leaders who work for justice, understanding, and the sharing of resources. Where laws are unjust, or those who enforce them are corrupt, lift up the voices of protest. Bring wisdom, compassion, and cooperation to all those in authority. God of new life, renewal, and comfort, we pray for our sister churches here in Elmville Presbyterian and Knox Glass as we continue to search for a minister to work with us in teaching and spreading the word of God throughout this community and around the world. Give us patience and hope as we move forward and can you continue to care for one another. Give us the energy and commitment needed to grow and connect with our church families while keeping us safe during this time of self-distancing during this pandemic. Renew and revive us. Give us hope that this will bring us a sense of normalcy soon and be able to be together face to face. Show us how to bring together our many personalities with the knowledge that we are all equal in the eyes of God. God, we know there are many possibilities for forgiveness and reconciliation. Help us to continue to open our eyes to nurture and sustain us and not to neglect or take for granted anyone. And Lord, we ask you to be with all those who are in a situation of illness, pain, grief, and loss within our church family. Give them healing and hope. We know there are many in our daily prayers. We especially ask you to comfort Linda and Bill in this time of loss of their mother, Mabel Reynolds. We pray for members of this congregation, especially Marilyn Cole, Lillian and Claire Robinson, Earl Graves, Nancy McGrady, Wally Greenlaw, Marlene Lambie, Cindy Brown, Ann Cowan, Bill Cox, Patsy Graham, Violet Graham, Lori Morton, and Herb, June, Jackie, and Russ Ritchie. Bring them comfort and courage to go on. Loving God, bring us moments of celebration and joy on this Easter Sunday. Give us gratitude and the impulse to share grace and understanding today and every day. We now pray together the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
joy and peace to you. Jesus is risen to him, the Father and the Spirit. Be glory, dominion, and power now and forever. Century after century.